This has been one of the more interesting weeks of preparation for the San Francisco 49ers as they get prepared for the Rams, which is the season finale. However, we already know they have the first round bye, so they aren't playing until the divisional round for a game that actually matters. So a lot of what we've been talking about, rest, no rest, rust, all those different types of things, Kyle Shanahan joins CanBR with Tolbert and Copes and discusses all these different elements and all the different layers that he's thinking about as a head coach. And I just think it gives phenomenal insight into what we've been trying to assume, like what we've been like. I've I've talked about it for a while. Like, I don't think Kyle feels super just great with resting everyone. And he's going to continue to extrapolate and discuss why this is a fine line that he needs to balance. And it's not as simple as just rest everyone and let's get ready for the playoffs. There's a lot more to it that meets the eye. So take a listen to Kyle Shanahan as he kind of discusses his interesting thought process behind this entire week, the planning that leads up into the bye week, and then how they need to prepare for the divisional round playoff game. Honestly, to me, this is fascinating. So take a listen right here and let me know what you think. But congrats on getting the uh, the one seed. Thank you. That has to feel good uh, getting that by. Now, did you? was it a pretty easy decision for you? I guess I haven't even asked you yet how you're going to handle uh, <laughs> Sunday. But uh, was, was that before you uh, let us know or not let us know uh, what your plans are on Sunday, was it an easy decision for you or was it something you had to wrestle with at all? I thought it was an easy decision because <laughs> Sunday, I mean, I've been fully counting on that for a while, having to go into this last week and it coming down to, you know, the one seed, the two seed, whatever it would be. Yeah. So I, I, didn't, I didn't think it would end like that. And um, so I've been so prepared for it. And once it did, I got on that plane. I'm like, oh, this is awesome, guys. We can relax a little bit. And we haven't been at this for a while. And <laughs> then I woke up Monday morning and I just sent everyone a FaceTime saying, guys, I actually now I've thought about this and there's no way in hell I can rest everybody. <laughs> so you guys better come in with the, your mind right on Wednesday and not think that whatever we were feeling on that plane ride home is the same now. Because when, when the reality hits you and you look into it and – I mean, first of all, you got to find out how many of your own players can't play, and yeah. we have we have at least six. Um, so there's six guys that are hurt, and so after that, there's only one other guy we can't dress because um, you're allowed seven, and then you mm -hmm. can get two practice squad guys up. So it's, I mean, if I could sit a bunch of our guys that I want to, um, I mean, I don't want anyone to get hurt, but if I could yeah. sit the guys that in order that you absolutely can't get hurt, that'd be great if that meant we could get another player up to go play that, uh, but you can't. You only can yeah. get the two practice squad guys up. So once you realize that and you start thinking of all the guys you want to sit, and then you look at what that means to the guy behind them, and it's like, man, I c you can't have – can't have just Ken Law and Kevin playing 70 snaps at D tackle yeah. throughout a whole game. They won't be ready in two weeks. And now that'll get the guy that we're resting. He'll have to do all this and he'll be hurt in the next game. And so you look at the same at receiver to running back to corners to safety to linebackers. And it's a lot harder than you think. So, but the, we did make the decision right away. We're going to get Brock out of there. We're going to sit okay. him. It'll be a good opportunity for Sam to come out there, um, play with our guys. And uh, I just got to, I got to feel the game out. You know, we got I got to make sure I don't overload anybody too much. Um, obviously, I, I would love to get the guys out um, as fast as possible, but um, it's going to take a little bit of time. And uh, hopefully we can come out there. Our guys definitely got the right mindset. Our guys are ready to go. They're expecting to play, and they are going to play. But I kind of just got to feel out how the game goes and um, make sure to, to get them out there as safe as I can. But uh, we also got to make sure that we play this game. What if, uh, I mean, I don't know what the league would do, uh, but what what if you and Sean just decided to kneel on the ball, like to take turns kneeling on it the whole game? <laughs> well, you might find out Sunday. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It's, I, uh, Not I don't know one what they yard do. gained in the, the entire game. I, I'll tell you what, what does make it a little bit easier is knowing they're not in the same situation, but it's similar. Yeah. Um, just knowing that and theirs can change a little bit. Theirs is different because they have to play in a week. You know, we got to play in three weeks with, or almost the game's three weeks um so you can't get a little rustier with that but you know them sitting their quarterback um puts us in a little bit of a similar situation and i think we can kind of play the game out and see how it goes and be ready to judge this once we get a feeling for it i said this yesterday i don't know if you'd agree with me or not but i said uh 
I mean, you got beat pretty good against Baltimore on uh, Christmas, and then you come back and clinch the number one seed the next week. So, I, I mean, everything's as you would have hoped it would be uh, heading into the last week of the season. Can that be used? Can that be beneficial, uh, losing that game and still having the number one seed? Like, we got the number one seed, but that's kind of fresh in our, our mind that, you know, if we don't – button things up we i mean we can be dominant they've shown that but if you don't those kind of things can happen oh, I, I definitely think so <clears throat> um i mean people don't in the nfl i don't care who you are and and then when you when you do play at a high level and and you're feeling confident because yeah. you should you're playing that way and but then everyone's telling you and stuff and pe- people on the outside don't think someone can get beat and, and it doesn't matter who you play if, you, if you're off um and in this league you can lose a game like that and i just go back to just watching things growing up and everything i mean i never thought the patriots were going to lose they were undefeated all year and yeah. i remember at the last game of the year they're going for a record and um it looks like the giants are going to beat them um, it was week 16. It goes 16 and 0, and the Patriots. I mean, they just they come back at the end like they usually um, did at that time, and um, they ended up making a hell of a play, and they won the game to finish 16 and 0. And then they faced the Giants again, and um, for their 19th game, and they ended up losing that at the last second. And you always just wonder, like, man, if if they would have gone 15 and 1 and lost that game, would that have adjusted in anything? Would that have made the Giants different? How would that have affected them played out to three games later? And I, I, I look at stuff like that a ton. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes when you do lose it, you, you see things that you might have been missing when you were winning. Because when you win, it's easier to look over things. And when you lose, you want to look at everything. And that's why the more you do this, the more you try to stay the same regardless of what's happening. I got a 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan with us on the UMA guest line. Niners and the Rams wrapping up the regular season on Sunday right here on the Sports Leader. How different is preparation through the next couple of weeks where you won't know the opponent than, I mean, like all week, all season long, you prepare for an opponent week after week after week. And now you're talking about the sort of the rest versus rust, keeping guys sharp and getting them some repetitions. I heard you talk about that uh, with the, uh, the media the other day. How, how, how does that work? What's the preparation look like? Well, that, that's that's also what the reminder was for me and everyone on our team when we woke up Monday. It was, oh, yeah, we earned the bye week, but understand this isn't the bye week. And that's why this week it's nice because we do have a team to prepare for. Yeah. And if you go by percentages and stuff, odds are this will be, could be the team that we're preparing for two weeks from now. Um, so I, I kind of like it that way, you know, because you, you, it's not like there is a chance we can see this team again. So it's not just about this week. It could be about the big game in a couple weeks. Um, so we're doing both of that right now. I mean, everything we do for this, this Sunday could possibly um, help us um, in a few weeks. And then when we get to next week, that's the week kind of that you're talking about. And then um, I am going to rest the guys. We're going to – we won't know who we're playing. So everything that we do with the players and stuff will just be about keeping the rust off and – having them go through just practice reps versus each other we'll do two full practices and we'll take two days off we'll do two full practices then we'll take two days off again and by that time it will be saturday and um we'll find out who we're playing that sunday and that's when the coaches will be preparing for a couple teams trying to guess but we'll come in sunday find out who we're playing officially and get to work because lots of times on sunday you find out who you're playing and that game ends up being saturday and that's only six days later uh, that's what happened to us in 19 so seems like you got a lot of time especially when it happens um but the way i keep reminding our players after this week when we're done truly with our, our regular season and we're done with the rams we're going to get two practices in we're going to have two days off and we'll find out who we're playing and all of a sudden it's going to be a short week and it might be six days before kickoff so you got to take advantage of every moment we got to make sure we take advantage of this week so when we do try to rest a little bit next week we're not saying oh man we rested too much this week now we got to go harder in our bye week and that's why i think this week's so important that we handle it right i kind of like the insight of like how relaxed they felt like after the game because we heard from fred warner and now we've heard from kyle shanahan they didn't believe that they were going to get the one seed. So in their brains, they had already programmed themselves to believe that they had to win out in order to get the one seed. So now that the fact that, you know, Arizona beats the Eagles and all of a sudden the 49ers are the one seed, it completely changes that mentality, the thought process, the stress is relieved. And I love Kyle talking about it like, like man, we were – hyped on the plane and we were like oh we're resting everyone and then he started to think about it and he's like wait a second 
<laughs> not so fast. Uh, there's actually a lot more to this just based on the straight up roster construction and who you can rest, who you can't rest, the injured players that are already on the squad. So it's pretty fascinating listening to like Kyle work through this. And like I was a former project manager. So when I'm listening to Kyle's logistical brain kind of discuss all of these things, I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. I get because as a project manager, it's about time management and, you know, being able to coordinate and execute different departments to do the same thing to all meet at once. And it's like you have to think about every little task and how they interact with each other and how they affect each other and how you can't do this until you do that. We can't prepare until we know on Sunday who's going to be our opponent. And then it's a short week. So it's like to me. I don't know if this is, again, the project manager inside of me that finds that that type of planning and process fascinating. But again, it's been just such an interesting week because it went from, I think, all of us believing that we were going to have to, to win out to get the to, to get the one seed and the buy to all of a sudden like, wait a second. The Rams don't matter there. The Rams are sitting all of their star players. But then there's the element that he talks about where the 49ers could be facing the Rams potentially in the divisional round or potentially in the NFC championship game. So there's another element to this. So I just find this week to be very interesting because it's a game that doesn't matter. Your quarterback and star running back are not playing in this game that we already know of. However... We've heard a lot of stories from Steve Young, who was on KMBR yesterday, talking about, I don't know if I like, I don't know if I like the thought process totally of just resting Brock. And Brock even spoke about it today. And he said, he's like, I feel kind of weird about it. it. Feels weird. It feels out of norm. Like it's not the normal process that I'm used to. And, I, and if you know anything about football players, they're very process oriented, very, very systematic in how they go about their daily work routine so the fact that it's shifted brock talked about it. it's just weird so it's been a fascinating week it's it's that fine line of rest versus rust how to prepare how to go about this in a specific way so i find this conversation fascinating um but if you want to listen to the entire kyle shanahan interview I dropped the link to the podcast on KMBR in the description below. So go check that out. Listen to the full one, uh, the full interview. There's plenty more. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.